Good evening. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Anita Anand with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews COVID-19 situation with chief ministers of Manipur, Tripura and Sikkim. Government says nine states witnessing decline in COVID-19 cases. Center says foreign aid being processed on priority basis to various parts of the country. Over 16 crore 50 lakh beneficiaries administered doses of COVID-19 vaccines in the country so far. Railways delivered more than 2,960 tons of liquid medical oxygen so far to various states. Postal Department and Customs Authorities start helpline to facilitate speedy delivery of COVID-related emergency shipments. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Australian counterpart agree on need to ensure equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines and medicines. In sports, Indian rowers Arjun Jat and Arvind Singh qualify for Tokyo Olympics in men's double skulls event. Wrestler Sumit Malik also earns Olympic quota in men's 125kg freestyle category. And in cricket, Indian team announced for upcoming World Test Championship and England tour. As the number of COVID cases is on the rise, we appeal to our listeners to take all precautions and all those above 18 years of age to get vaccinated without any hesitation. The vaccination for persons aged between 18 and 44 has begun at designated facilities. Stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing. Focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to Chief Ministers of Manipur, Tripura and Sikkim on the COVID-related situation in these states. Sources in the central government said that the Prime Minister took stock of the situation related to healthcare facilities and vaccination in these states. Yesterday, the Prime Minister spoke to Chief Ministers of Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and Jharkhand along with Lieutenant Governors of Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir to take stock of COVID-related situation in these states and union territories. The Health and Family Welfare Ministry has said that nine states and districts are witnessing a decline in the COVID-19 cases after registering a rise in the cases. However, the ministry expressed its concern over the rise in the coronavirus cases in few states and union territories. Briefing media in New Delhi today, Additional Secretary in the Health Ministry, R.T. Ahuja, said that there are 12 states wherein active cases are above 1 lakh. जहां पर एक लाख से ज्यादा एक्टिव केसेस हैं वैसे 12 राज्य हैं जहां 50000 से 1 लाख के बीच के एक्टिव केसेस हैं वैसे 7 राज्य हैं और जहां 50000 से कम एक्टिव केसेस हैं वैसे 17 राज्य हैं यदि हम राज्य देखें जहां पर की केस लोड ज्यादा है वो राज्य हैं महाराष्ट्र कर्नाटक Kerala, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Haryana or Bihar she said over 16 crore 50 lakh beneficiaries have been administered doses of COVID-19 vaccine in the country so far. Of this, over 13 crore 21 lakh have received the first dose, whereas 3 crore 29 lakh have received the second dose. She said 71 pressure swing adsorption PSA plants have been installed out of the sanctioned 162 plants and the remaining plants will be installed by the end of June this year. She added that a total of 1,594 PSA plants will be established across the country. Giving the details about the foreign aid, Ms. Ahuja said officials of different ministries and group of experts review the aid received from various countries on a daily basis. She asserted that the received items are being processed on a priority basis to the various parts of the country. She added that over 11,000 items have already been dispatched across the country. Additional Secretary Damu Ravi appreciated the efforts of foreign countries in providing the necessary support in this crisis situation. Terming COVID-19 a global crisis, he stressed on the need for collective action and strategies. He assured that no consignment is pending at the airports. Principal Scientific Advisor K. Vijay Raghwan 
stressed on the need of taking strong measures to avoid the third wave of the pandemic. He said it depends much on how effectively the guidance is implemented at various levels. The union government is continuously engaged in allocation and delivery of relief materials received from the various countries. The Health and Family Welfare Ministry has said that a total of 2,933 oxygen concentrators, 2,429 oxygen cylinders, 13 oxygen generation plants and 2,951 ventilators BIPAP and CPAP machines and more than 3 lakh remdesivir vials have been delivered to the states and union territories so far. The ministry has said that all the received items till yesterday have been allocated and dispatched to the states and institutions. The health ministry has said a dedicated coordination cell has been created in the ministry to coordinate the receipt and allocation of relief materials received from foreign countries. It said the cargo clearance and deliveries are facilitated without delay in coordination with various agencies. Foreign countries are continuously providing medical equipment to India in its fight against COVID-19 pandemic. The Ministry of External Affairs said shipments carrying 53 ventilators from Denmark and second part of the oxygen generating plants from Germany have reached India today. The Ministry thanked the countries for providing these relief materials. The Railways is continuing its journey of bringing relief by delivering liquid medical oxygen to various states across the country. The government today said that the Railways has so far delivered more than 2,960 tons of liquid medical oxygen to various states across the country. The Railway Ministry said 47 Oxygen Express have already completed their journey. The Ministry said presently 18 tankers are on the run with more than 260 tons of liquid medical oxygen which are expected to arrive in Maharashtra, Haryana and Delhi. The Ministry said so far the Railways has delivered 174 tons of liquid medical oxygen to Maharashtra, 729 tons to Uttar Pradesh, 249 tons to Madhya Pradesh, 1,334 tons to Delhi, 305 tons to Haryana and 123 tons to Telangana. The Railways has handed over 298 isolation coaches to various states for COVID care with a bed capacity of more than 4,700 beds. The Ministry of Railways said it has swiftly moved 21 isolation coaches to Guwahati and 20 isolation coaches to Badarpur near Silchar in Assam. It said the latest demand came from Gujarat wherein the Railways have deployed 10 coaches for Sabarmati and 6 coaches for Chandolia. The Railways has made available a fleet of more than 4,400 isolation coaches with around 70,000 beds so far to serve as isolation units. The Ministry said these isolation coaches have also been positioned in the states of Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. The Indian Air Force and Indian Navy have intensified their efforts to aid the civil administration in tackling the current COVID-19 situation by ferrying oxygen containers and medical equipment. The Defence Ministry said as of today, the C-17 aircraft of Indian Air Force have conducted 400 sorties within the country, including 351 to airlift 252 oxygen tankers of total capacity of 4,904 tons. The cities covered were Jamnagar, Bhopal, Chandigarh, Panagar, Indore, Ranchi, Agra, Jodhpur, Begampet, Bhubneshwar, Pune, Surat, Raipur, Udaipur, Mumbai, Lucknow, Nagpur, Gwalior, Vijaywada, Baroda, Dimapur and Hindon. The Air Force aircraft also conducted 59 international sorties to airlift 72 cryogenic oxygen storage containers of 1,233 tons. The containers and cylinders were procured from Singapore, Dubai, Bangkok, UK, Germany, Belgium and Australia. In addition, the C-17 and IL-76 aircraft have been tasked to airlift cryogenic oxygen containers, oxygen generators and ventilators from Israel and Singapore. The Navy has also deployed INS Indian Navy ships Talwar, Kolkata, Erawat, Kochi, Rabat, Trikand, Jalashwa and Shardul to ferry oxygen containers, cylinders and concentrators and related equipment from friendly foreign countries. The Ministry said in the coming days, loading of oxygen containers and other medical supplies has also been planned on INS Tarkash, Shardul and Jalashwa from Doha, Kuwait and Muara in Brunei. 
The government today said that the Postal Department, in collaboration with the Customs Authorities, has started helpline to facilitate speedy delivery of COVID-related emergency shipments. During the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic, Department of Posts has been facilitating clearance, processing and delivery of COVID-related emergency shipments like oxygen concentrators, equipment and medicines received through post from abroad. The Ministry of Communication said the Department of Posts has issued a public notice in this regard. The customers who are expecting to receive any shipment sent through post from abroad can send details of their consignment such as name, mobile number, email ID, tracking ID and delivery address on email address add gym2 at the rate indiapost.gov.in or dop.covid19 at the rate gmail.com. The ministry said the customer can also send the details through WhatsApp to the nodal officers. The mobile number of nodal officer Arvind Kumar is 9868378497 and Puneet Kumar is 9536623331. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today spoke with his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison over telephone. Mr Modi conveyed his appreciation for the prompt and generous support extended by the government and the people of Australia for India's fight against the second wave of COVID-19. The two leaders agreed on the need to ensure affordable and equitable access to vaccines and medicines for containing COVID-19 globally. The Prime Minister sought Australia's support for the initiative taken at the World Trade Organization by India and South Africa to seek a temporary waiver under TRIPS in this context. Minister of State in PMO Dr. Jitendra Singh today said that Baba Atomic Center and Department of Atomic Energy are helping in countries fight against the pandemic by providing COVID-related equipment and technology. In an online review meeting with senior officials of the department, Dr. Singh lauded the initiatives for public welfare during COVID-19. He said the development of protocol for sterilization of PPE kits using cobalt source has the potential for the use of PPE kits. The minister said that the Department of Atomic Energy also successfully developed reagents for RT-PCR testing besides powered respirators, portable plasma sterilization and plasma incineration technology for medical waste. During the meeting, Dr. Singh was informed that 25% of beds numbering about 600 have been reserved for cancer patients infected by COVID in all Tata Memorial Hospitals. Home and Health Minister of Haryana Anil Vij has said that management of oxygen generation plants should be handed over to military and paramilitary for its safe and smooth functioning. Mr. Vij said it will help in dealing with oxygen-related problems being faced at present. The minister further said that the state government is continuously making efforts to distribute oxygen as per the requirement in all the hospitals. He added that with the assistance of the central government, 60 oxygen plants will be set up at various government hospitals in the state with a capacity of 30, 50, 100 and 200 beds. The health minister said that work is presently going on to set up six oxygen plants in government hospitals of the state. After Ambala, oxygen plants will soon start functioning in Panchkula, Faridabad and Hisar as well. He said production at oxygen plants installed in Karnal and Sonipat has already started. He said work is going on to make government hospitals a self-sufficient one in oxygen. Mr. Witt said the state government is fully prepared for the vaccination of children in the state. He said the state will start the process as soon as the vaccination for children is approved and the state gets its quota of vaccine. You're listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews COVID-19 situation with Chief Ministers of Manipur, Tripura and Sikkim. Government says nine states witnessing decline in COVID-19 cases. Centre says foreign aid being processed on priority basis to various parts of the country. Over 16 crore 50 lakh beneficiaries administered doses of COVID-19 vaccine in the country so far. Railways delivered more than 2,960 tons of liquid medical oxygen so far to various states. Postal Department and Customs Authorities start helpline to facilitate speedy delivery of COVID-related emergency shipments. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Australian counterpart agree on need to ensure equitable access 
to COVID-19 vaccines and medicines. In sports, Indian rowers Arjun Jad and Arvind Singh qualify for Tokyo Olympics in men's double skulls event. Wrestler Sumit Malik also earns Olympic quota in men's 125kg freestyle category. And in cricket, Indian team announced for upcoming World Test Championship final and England tour. For quick news updates, round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the evening news on All India Radio. A total of 19,832 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been reported in the national capital during the last 24 hours, taking the total number of cases to over 12,92,000. The Delhi government has said over 11,83,000 people affected with COVID-19 have been cured so far. In the last 24 hours, over 19,000 patients have recovered and 341 deaths were reported in the city. So far, over 18,700 people have died due to COVID-19 in Delhi. Presently, the total number of active cases of COVID-19 in the national capital is 91,035. In a high-level meeting, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said the situation of oxygen in the national capital is coming under control. He also instructed that vaccination drive should complete in three months. Mr. Kejriwal said the Delhi government will organize mass vaccination camps for journalists. It will include electronic media, digital media and print media. The camps will be organized in all media houses at their offices and the Delhi government will bear all the cost. Goa Chief Minister Dr. Pramod Savant has announced 50 days curfew in the state starting from 9th of this month amid surge in coronavirus cases. The curfew will continue till 23rd of May. During the curfew period, essential services shops will remain open from 7 a.m. till 1 p.m. Chief Minister Dr. Savant said those who move out without any purpose or reason will be firmly dealt with the apt provisions of law. He appealed to the people to stay at home and cooperate in breaking the chain of coronavirus. 56 deaths due to COVID-19 and 4,195 new patients were reported in Goa today. Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister and Guardian Minister of Pune District Ajit Pawar today called for strict implementation of restrictions in Pune to bring the number of patients under control. He said instructions have been given to the administration to tighten the restrictions. Yesterday, the Bombay High Court made an observation that if COVID cases in Pune are rising, then the government should think of imposing a lockdown in Pune. Following this, a meeting was convened under the chairmanship of Mr. Pawar at the Divisional Commissioner's Office in Pune to review COVID situation and measures in the district. After the meeting, the Deputy Chief Minister said the number of patients has increased only in rural areas of Pune, while there is a decline in number of cases in the city. He said instructions have been given to tighten restrictions in Pune. As the country grapples with the second wave of COVID-19, the Maharashtra government has already started planning and gearing up for the third wave. Experts have warned that the third wave of COVID-19 is likely to impact children. In view of this apprehension, the Maharashtra government has decided to set up a pediatric task force. More from our Mumbai correspondent. Maharashtra Health Minister Rajesh Tope informed that the state government has decided to set up a special pediatric task force. He said as per recommendations of this task force, various facilities like beds, pediatric ventilators, special newborn care unit beds, etc. will be set up by the state government. Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre also had a discussion with pediatric doctors regarding this. Besides, Tope informed that in order to increase oxygen supply, the state has given orders for setting more than 150 pressure swing adsorption medical oxygen plants which will commence in the coming days. While above about 38 PSA plants have been commissioned so far, generating about 53 metric tons of oxygen per day. Sweetie Jain, Air News, Mumbai. All MLAs in Gujarat will have to allot a minimum of 50 lakh rupees compulsorily from their local area development fund to upgrade facilities at hospitals. The Gujarat government took the decision at a meeting of the core committee for COVID control. 
more from our Ahmedabad correspondent. According to the Gujarat government, every MLA will be required to allot their local area development fund to purchase medical equipment for the hospitals. This will help to upgrade the medical facilities in the civil hospitals, district hospitals, community health centers, primary health centers and hospitals run by local civic bodies. According to the official sources, MLAs can allot the funds to the hospitals in their constituencies. MLAs can also donate their grants to the hospitals run by charitable trust on no profit basis. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. In Odisha, the COVID vaccine wastage rate has been limited down to 2.2%. Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik has said that the state has vaccinated more people than the number of doses received from the center by prudently using the extra dose available in each vial as wastage. The state so far has vaccinated about 60 lakh eligible people. More from our Bhubaneswar correspondent. In yet another development, Union Minister Dharmendra Pradhan today virtually inaugurated 100-bed ICU with ventilators in a private hospital in Burgad in Western Odisha. On the occasion, he expressed the hope that the 10 Western Odisha districts, including Burgad, that now are witnessing a spike in COVID-19 cases, will greatly benefit from this new health facility. Incidentally, Sundargad, another Western Odisha district, has reported 2,073 fresh infections, that is the inter-district highest for today. Meanwhile, while COVID-19 infection in the state tossed a new high with a record 12,000 plus people reported positive today. Girish Chandrada, EIR News, Bhubaneswar. In Chhattisgarh, in compliance with an interim order of the High Court, the state government has decided to restart the third phase of inoculation for the age group of 18 to 44 years. Now the vaccination to various categories, that is the poorest under until the below poverty line and above poverty line, will be in equal ratio. Separate vaccination centers will be set up in districts for all these categories. Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yadirappa has announced a complete lockdown in the state from Monday. The total lockdown will come into effect from 10th of this month at 6 a.m. and will continue till 6 a.m. on the 24th of May. He said that stringent measure has been taken as the COVID deaths in the state is increasing day by day. A window is created between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. for the public to purchase essential items. Hotels can allow the parcel service for the public. Bar and restaurants and industries will be closed. The chief minister said that after 10 a.m., the movement of vehicles and people will be completely banned. Metro, rail and public transport will not operate. Kerala will be under complete lockdown from tomorrow till the 16th of this month as COVID-19 cases continue to surge in the state. We have a report. Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan assured that essential services will not be disrupted during the lockdown. Public transport will not be there. State and central government offices, excluding those under essential services, will remain closed from tomorrow. Only 20 people are allowed in funeral rites and marriage ceremonies and registration on COVID Jagrata portal is mandatory. Shops selling essential commodities will only be allowed to open till 7.30 p.m. India district travel will not be permitted except for emergencies. Chief Minister urged complete public support for the lockdown and strict abidance to COVID guidelines. Meanwhile, 38,460 new COVID cases were confirmed today. The test positivity rate is at 26.64%. Presently, over 4 lakh active COVID cases are there in Kerala. Mayusha, Kaya News, Tiruvannathapuram. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh today visited the COVID care center being set up at Imphal West and took stock of the arrangement being made at the center. The facility, which will have a capacity of 600 beds, will start operating by tomorrow evening. During the visit, the Chief Minister appealed to the doctors present at the center to render their services with dedication and commitment as they have a crucial role in successfully fighting the pandemic and saving the lives of the people. The National Commission of Women, NCW, has said that the accountability of police and state authorities needs to be fixed in connection with the violence in West Bengal. The NCW chairperson, Rekha Sharma, was on a two-day visit to West Bengal from 5th of this month to inquire into the incidents of violence, including heinous crimes such as rape and murder against women in West Bengal post-elections. The commission had taken so much cognizance of the incidents and constituted a three-member fact-finding committee to look into the matter. The commission in a statement said there is also a need for sensitization and training of police officials for better handling of cases related to women and the number of women police officers in the force must be increased. 
the team upon talking to several victims has observed that the police officials of West Bengal were not taking effective steps to provide security to women in the state. The increase in coronavirus positive cases in Jammu and Kashmir has necessitated people to adopt some physical exercises like yoga and pranayam to relieve the stress due to the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic. However, listening to soothing music is considered as a panacea for any sort of stress that goes a long way in relieving mental stress. More from our Srinagar correspondent. In view of the unabated mental stress arising out of the prevailing upsurge in the positive cases of COVID-19 in Jammu and Kashmir, there is a need to address the growing mental stress and fatigue among the people at large. Accordingly, a song with a fervent prayer to Almighty God sung by a famous playback singer of Kashmir, Raja Bilal, about eradication of the pandemic relieves us from the mental stress and mesmerizes everyone. Let us listen to Raja Bilal. Sunil Kohl, AR News, Sirinagar. Minister of Housing and Urban Affairs Hardeep Singh Puri today hit out at the Congress saying the party's discourse on Central Vista is bizarre. In a tweet, Mr. Puri said that the cost of Central Vista is about 20,000 crore rupees over several years. He said the central government has allocated nearly twice that amount for vaccination. Mr. Puri said India's health care budget for just this year is over 3 lakh crore rupees and the government knows its priorities. He said during UPA rule, Congress leaders wrote about the need for a new parliament building and the speaker in 2012 wrote a letter to the Urban Development Ministry for the same and now they are opposing the same project. Two Indian rowers succeeded in confirming their berths for Tokyo Olympics today. Arjun Jad and Arvind Arvin Singh qualified for the men's double skulls event after finishing second at the Asia Oceania Continental Regatta event. Wrestler Sumit Malik has secured a Tokyo Olympics berth after reaching the final in the 125 kilogram freestyle category of the World Wrestling Qualifier at Sofia in Bulgaria. The Board of Cricket Control in India, BCCI, has announced the Indian squad for the upcoming ICC World Test Championship WTC final against New Zealand and five match test series against England. Team India's first stop will be in Southampton where they play New Zealand to decide the first champion of the test format. India finished at the number one side with 72.2 percentage points after their 3-1 win against England at home. The test series against England will start from 4th August in Nottingham. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is expected to have mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature will be around 23 degrees Celsius. Maximum is expected to hover between around 39 degrees. Mumbai will have partly cloudy sky. Chennai may have thunderstorm with rain with minimum temperature touching 29 degrees Celsius and maximum expected at 37 degrees. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. Jammu is likely to have partly cloudy sky. Srinagar will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Leh will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. In Gilgit, minimum temperature will be around 12 degrees Celsius and maximum is expected at around 30 degrees. The region will have partly cloudy sky. And in Muzaffarabad, the sky will be partly cloudy. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews COVID-19 situation with Chief Ministers of Manipur, Tripura and Sikkim. Government says nine states witnessing decline in COVID-19 cases. Centre says foreign aid being processed on priority basis to various parts of the country. Over 16 crore 50 lakh beneficiaries administered doses of COVID-19 vaccine in the country so far. Railways delivered more than 2,960 tons of liquid medical oxygen so far to various states. Postal Department and Customs Authorities start helpline to facilitate speedy delivery of COVID-related emergency shipments. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Australian counterpart agree on need to ensure equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines and medicines. In sports, Indian rowers Arun Jhat and Arvind Singh qualify for Tokyo Olympics in men's double skulls event. 
Wrestler Sumit Malik also earns Olympic quota in men's 125 kg freestyle category. And in cricket, Indian team announced for upcoming World Test Championship final and England tour. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.